Wisdom. It's an incredibly valuable asset. Some would say more precious than gold. It's attractive, appealing, admirable. Conversely, a lack of wisdom is the basis of immaturity, blind spots, and bad decisions. Wisdom. It can be gained over time, but it can't be rushed. But wisdom can be shared. That's precisely what we are here to do right now. Today, we are here to hack wisdom, to distill it, to understand it, and to process it. Why? To get better at life. Welcome to The Main Thing. This is your new nine-minute podcast. I'm your host, Skip Lineberg, and I've set out to interview the wisest people I know. We'll see what we can learn from each one when they're faced with an incredibly difficult, soul-piercing question. Welcome to the Main Thing Podcast, your wisdom podcast. Each episode, we bring you a concise, high-impact wisdom lesson from one of the wisest people I know. Studying their wisdom and learning together, we all get just a little better at this thing called life. Denise Workman, our guest today, is one of the most genuine and kind human beings I've ever met. With her bright, glowing smile, she radiates warmth and positivity. You might just say Denise has an infectious personality. As a lifelong educator, she spent her career channeling that kindness and energy towards special needs students. We'll have fun today as we explore Denise's deep, authentic wisdom. Along the way, you'll learn the tremendous importance and the sheer power of hope, and why growing up in a small town is in fact a superpower. I'm so glad you're here with me in our learning space once again, and I want to encourage you to visit our website to learn all about the wisdom resources we offer. Just head over to www.themainthingpodcast.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our twice-monthly free wisdom newsletter. Now, here's a bit more about our wise guest. Denise Workman is a teacher for the gifted who specializes in student identification, advocacy, enrichment, and talent development. She is a past president and current member of the West Virginia Association for Gifted and Talented. Denise is active in her community as a volunteer. She currently serves on the board of directors for the West Virginia University Alumni Association and as a board member for the Charles and Mary Fane Glotfelty Foundation. Denise is a devoted supporter of the Boone County WBU Alumni Chapter, focusing on its annual pig roast fundraiser and scholarships for students of Boone County. Denise and her husband, Todd Mount, reside in Charleston, West Virginia. So settle in and get ready. Over the next 20 minutes, you will discover why Denise Workman is one of the wisest people I know. Denise Workman, welcome to the Main Thing Podcast. Thank you, Skip. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. We are in late August. It's the start of the school year, and you're in education. Fall is in the air. We've had a couple cool mornings here, especially this morning was wonderful. Sleeves. Yes. Yeah, I wore long sleeves for the first time yesterday, and here I am again. Same. I, that's, that must be my answer. People have said, I like your dress today, and I'm like, sleeves was, was the decision maker. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Denise, you work with uh, gifted children. You're an educator. Uh, tell us about giftedness and how you approach your work. I have a master's in special education for the gifted, and I'm a teacher for the gifted in Canal County Schools. Mm -hmm. um, as you can imagine, with the gift, sometimes comes some stuff. So being very able does not make all of the normal conventions of growing up just go away. And in many ways, it just magnifies mm. those issues. Um, and it doesn't make the process of learning very smooth. I mean, it's contrary to what lots of people believe. So a lot of the work that I do is with a student's individual gift and helping them navigate the learning process and the world. Um, sometimes it's just soft skills. Okay. Sometimes it's teaching them how to not be so braggadocious. Mm. Um, sometimes, Humility. Yes. Yeah. Um, executive function, uh, mm -hmm. setting a timer to stay focused, or just keeping a planner or how to put a notebook together. Yeah. I mean, it's that simple. Um, so 
I refer to myself as both a practitioner and an advocate. Um, I love that. So in addition to those practical things that students need to learn, I um, try to work with the adults and systems in their life so that they um, can understand that being gifted is not a luxury or something extra. Okay. Um, that, you know, I try to help them figure out that being smart does not make you great at the game of school. And I will tell you, as an advocate, it does not make you a popular person. <laughs> So how long have you been doing gifted uh, education? Gosh, um, about 24 years. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did it find you or did you find your way to it? So I started out as a middle school science teacher and um, then realized pretty quickly, if you want to make an extra nickel as a teacher, you're going to have to go back to grad school. So okay. I taught a few okay. years oh, yeah. and then went, and went back, back and got mm -hmm. my master's in special ed for the gifted. And so I've been doing that ever since. So you found it. I found it. <laughs> All right. But I had good examples, you did. like a little kernel in my soul. What was life like growing up in a small town in Boone County, West Virginia? I love this question. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Madison, and that was the county seat of Boone County. Um, at that time, though it was strapped with some of those problems of the southern coal fields that mm -hmm. you would expect, Madison was a vibrant uh, and diverse business and education environment. Um, I had a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, and although a lot of those same folks are anchored there, um, it's a, it's a pale comparison to to itself. My mom is still down there. Uh, um, yeah. An organization that I work really um, hard for and with is um, our WVU alumni group that out of Boone County. Um, we are the largest scholarship fundraising um, alumni association in the world. Wow. So, oh um, yes. So I think that growing up in Madison is a superpower because um, without the amenities and distractions of a larger city, um, you're forced to dream, uh, to be yeah. curious, to be resilient, to be resourceful. Uh, you learn that nothing is accomplished alone. So you rely on the community in many ways. And you know that the community relies on you. Mm -hmm. So that's why I continue to give back. Um, even though I don't live there now, it's still important to me. Why don't you start the story of how we're connected and I'll jump in and add a few color comments. Absolutely. We're connected through a program called Wonder and Grow. Uh, we were part of a, a cohort um, as they were learning a new business model mm -hmm. uh, for the work that they do. And we had been together on a series of Zoom meetings over six weeks. Yeah, I think so. I think about this time last year, we were starting those meetings. And um, then we uh, gathered together on in the end of September last year, and we became fast friends. The Wonder and Grow Mindful Nature Experience that we enjoyed last fall, about this time last year, a whole weekend in the Canaan Valley Wilderness in West Virginia. Uh, just a beautiful time, but that was all organized by one of the founders and proprietors of Wonder and Grow is Kate Reed, former podcast guest, if that name sounds familiar. She was our wise guest on episode 87, and one of our classmates in that cohort was Veronica Lewis, who also appeared on the show on episode 103. Wasn't it so interesting how um, they curated their people <laughs> yeah. for that? I think that might be a superpower as well, putting people together like that, and it, it just worked out beautifully. 192. 192 extra minutes of wisdom. That's what you get when you become a patron of the Main Thing Podcast. Many of you continue to say, we want to hear more from these wise guests. That's precisely what patrons of our podcast get. Exclusive access to bonus episodes called The Whole Thing. These 30-minute special shows bring you a deeper dive into our guests' wisdom. Less editing, more laughter. Less time limits, more stories. Unlock those 192 extra minutes of wisdom for yourself for as little as $9 per month through the Patreon platform. And when you become a patron, you also get access to Wisdom Essays, behind-the-scenes glimpses, 
and access to special patron-only wisdom gatherings. Head over to patreon.com slash the main thing podcast. Go unlock your 192 extra minutes of wisdom. Denise Workman, what is the main thing that you've learned in your lifetime so far? Skip, the main thing I've learned in my lifetime so far is that hope gives life meaning. It motivates us to strive for our dreams, persevere in adversity, and find meaning in our lives. Mm. Hope stretches us and energizes and our continuous growth and development. Hope gives life meaning. There are so many words in that phrase that I love, that I just love. Let's, uh, let's explore all the nuance there. I'm, uh, I am fascinated with hope. I'm fascinated with resilience. And um, I've learned a lot about having hope and holding on to it uh, over the last five years. So this is a rich, uh, rich topic and fertile ground that I'm so eager to explore. Uh, tell us a little bit more about it. Skip, I've always had a sense of hope. Um, that small town girl depended on that. Mm -hmm. But you had asked me to think about when my wisdom crystallized. And I think that um, this concept crystallized for me when I was working um, on a project helping launch communities and schools for the state of West Virginia. And the focus of communities in schools is to surround students with a community of support, empowering them to stay in school and achieve in life. And that seems simple enough. But as I entered schools, and we started with the low performing, high poverty, lots of at risk um, student populations around the state, um, but as we entered those, I saw some tremendous and wide ranging needs of students. I realized that the common missing piece for most of the students we were targeting was hope. Mm. It was never mentioned. Um, and what I figured out after lots of driving country roads and, you know, after leaving these places and talking to people is you cannot focus on your hopes and dreams when you do not have a stable life, you are hungry, you are unhoused, or you're dealing with trauma. Yeah, yeah. That, they, that makes sense. They, they are, everything is so necessary that they are not, they don't even conceptualize hope. Yeah. And I, that's when I realized, gosh, I've always had a little hope. You have to lean in on hope every now and then and um you know i work hard much mm -hmm. like you were saying you know you're just nose to the grindstone <laughs> but as i but as i have become more mindful um i realize i hope hard too it might sound woo woo for someone but um it's very real for me and concrete love your main thing hope gives life meaning how about a recent personal example where you had to lean into that and uh, get you get through a challenge or some adversity? I, I really appreciate that question. Um, it's a tumultuous time. The noise of culture wars and anti-education sentiment um, that's upon us right now, it clangs in my soul and it causes me grief. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear no good news yeah. um, associated with education. And I um, take up the mantle of public education because I know that knowledge is power and yes. I have seen the difference that an education can make. Um, still, the anti-education rhetoric really impacts me. I, I try to be more resilient and I'm working on that, but it really gets to me sometimes. So right now what I'm focusing on is I'm trying to, to think of all of the children staring back at me, that is giving me the power of hope when I see them every day. Every teacher I know mm -hmm. is just trying to teach the child sure. and trying to help them um, as young people learn the basics, as big people learn enough so that they can make good decisions. And I think that's what scares people a little bit about education because that little thing that I say that knowledge is power what if everybody had knowledge and suddenly your power was diminished? You didn't have something over them. Um, so that's that scarcity mentality. I think it is that scarcity mentality. We all can't have it. And I just, I don't believe that. Um, the more you get, the more I have to give up. And, and, and I just don't think don't that education's that. the playground for that yeah. at all. Okay. Hope gives life meaning. 
if we took away the meaning, what would that look like? I was doing a little bit of research on this and trying to find out what does hopelessness look like? Sure. And so hopelessness can take a variety of forms, lack of inspiration as well of a feeling of, of powerlessness, okay. helplessness, abandonment, captivity, mm. oppression, and isolation. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what they're describing hopelessness yeah. Yeah. as. So hope does not have a price, but as you say, I, um, it's more valuable than gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you find yourself losing hope, you know, it's almost like digging for gold. You have to dig deep and um, maybe think of a time when you were hopeful, find something to hold on to and channel that until you feel stronger. Mm-hmm. But when you think about all those um times when people can be hopeless um i can see myself in all of those sure. but somehow i persevere yeah yeah so, where does that come from in you and role models uh I, family values community values it could be all of that yeah. i think so um yeah. i just always um you know I, I guess i did grow up in a culture where you couldn't give up uh, nobody gave up. Right. You know, people fought through tough times. I had a single mom. That means I had a single dad. Mm-hmm. You know, we navigated that um, over the years. And um, so somehow that little seed stayed alive. Hope gives life meaning. How can a listener take this wisdom, your wisdom phrase, your main thing, and, and begin to apply it tomorrow to uh, internalize that into their life? whatever it is that you have in your vision or what symbolizes hope for you. Um, Cherish it, take care of it, cultivate it, and share it with others when you can. I think, I think that is, is how you can apply um, my wisdom on hope. That's a good place to leave it. Denise, uh, thank you so much for coming on today, sharing your wisdom. Hope gives life meaning. You've given us hope and meaning with uh, with the wisdom that you shared today. Thank you so much. I love being here. Thanks. So long for now. Absolutely. Wow, that goes by incredibly fast, doesn't it? Time flies when you're hacking wisdom. I hope you're left wanting more. Sync up with us again next time on The Main Thing for nine more minutes of wisdom. <laughs>